Okay, uh, so I'm going to discuss how to design the calendar in the sense of how people solve this problem of finding which date is when over uh, history. Uh, so which questions should be addressed when you come to design the calendar? The first is what do you want? Do you want that the spring starts on the 1st of March every month? Do you want that uh, the flooding of the Nile happens? just in six days. So uh, that kind of question. Uh, what are the tools that you have? What are the physical phenomena that you can use to design the calendar? Uh, and uh, you should know your limits, of course. You shouldn't set a goal which is impossible to achieve. So let's discuss it in a bit more detail. So what do we want? First of all, you want to arrange your schedule in a convenient way. When to sow wheat, when to hunt buffalo, when to wait for uh, For instance, uh, uh, the Romans like to have corn in, uh, in the spring, so that's probably a good time to have marked in the calendar. You could f have a religious holiday that it is very important to you and you want uh, to have it fixed in the calendar because the gods will get angry if it's somehow misplaced. Um, you want it to be precise, probably. Uh, you want to be able to make precise measurements so it shouldn't be based on some far-fetched technology which does not yet exist. And it should be uh, consistent in the long run. You don't want your spring to start in a new month every hundred years. Okay, uh, the next thing is uh, convenience. Um, you should have uh, essentially a simple set of rules if you want it to stay like that for a long enough period of time. Uh, because uh, well, the rules are too complicated and you still don't have computers. You are just a simple civilization. But, but most people illiterated probably uh, will find that alteration not all enter the pattern. Uh, one more thing that you could uh, want is to manipulate politics. For instance, you could uh, extend your friend's uh, term in the office by introducing new years that was very common in Rome uh, for a while, so you could use that uh, as a, politic, uh, a political tool. And uh, there are some other non-trivial considerations. For instance, uh, there is a quote attributed to Jan Van Xian, uh, who said that it is better to have a round calendar than to have foreigners in China. So if that is your um, first value, if you prefer no foreigners in China, you are willing to pay the price and perhaps this is strategy, but this is not the kind of consideration that we will take. Okay. Uh, so, before we begin, some basic uh, astronomy. So, uh, this is the Sun, the Earth. It sits in the middle and the Sun goes around the Earth, as you all know. So, since the Earth is uh, tilted, you don't see the Sun going like this, but rather in the ecliptic, which is tilted because the Earth, axis of the Earth has this tilt. And there are several points on this. Uh, circle point. So, uh, the vernal equinox, for instance, it is that instant uh, when day and night are equal, just when the sun passes here in the ecliptic. It currently it happens uh, on March 25th, and uh, you have the same point in autumn, and you have the two solstices, which are the day when uh, the day is longest and when the night is longest. This is in December. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, the rotation axis of the Earth is not fixed. It's actually a processing, uh, which uh, causes uh, the precession of the equinoxes. So it has a period of about 26,000 years. And uh, so the vernal and autumnal equinoxes are going to 
Okay, uh, so uh, what do we have as a periodic motion to set our calendar uh, by? We have Earth going around the Sun, obviously. What does it give us? We get the sidereal year, which is with respect to the stars. Uh, it lasts like this, and it is easy to observe. Basically, you pick your favorite star, and you watch where it rises. You wait till it rises the same place again, and you get your sidereal year. You have the tropical year. So, uh, there are several definitions. Uh, basically, this is the time between spring begins and spring begins again, but you could also say autumn begins, autumn begins, and this is not precisely the same because of uh, several instabilities of Earth's orbit, but let's ignore that for a moment. Uh, so, this year is uh, about 20 minutes shorter. So, if you are a civilization which established itself for several centuries, you will notice the difference those two years. Uh, another thing that you have is uh, the moon going around the sun. That's uh, a lot easier to observe, has a duration uh, which you are well familiar with, and uh, it has nothing to do with seasons, so this is the main topic. It's just something which is periodic, but it's not related to it. But we can count it anyway. Uh, the third question, how long is time will be? Uh, goes like this. So, uh, all things are changing, this is well known. Uh, for instance, Earth's rotation is uh, slowing because of the tidal effect, so the days become uh, longer. That's an obstacle. Uh, the, for the same reason, the Moon is getting further from Earth, so it's slowing down, so the months become longer. And there's uh, a lot of uh, just uh, non-random and random noise due to various gravitational effects of the various bodies in the solar system. Uh, for instance, uh, the vernal equinox, which is the, t the point of spring, if you try to measure your year from vernal equinox itself, it proves ra rather stable, but this is an empirical fact. For autumn, it, by a couple of orders of magnitudes, less stable for some reason. And uh, my conclusion by looking at various numbers is that you cannot really design a calendar which will be more precise than uh, one day drift within several millennia. So uh, let's keep that in mind and don't get over ambitious. Okay, uh, which types of calendars uh, do you have? Uh, there's the lunar calendar. Uh, it's historically the most basic one because moon is uh, very easy to see. So months are typically alternating between 30 and 29 days because the period is about 29 and a half days. And uh, that's it. For the solar year, uh, you ignore uh, the moon not interesting, it's actually more useful probably because you will know when when to hunt your deer or when to sow barley. This is related to the seasons. Mm. But for historical reasons the months are usually still 30 years. Uh, 30 months, 30 days, uh, because a lot of solar calendars actually started out as lunar calendars and there the number 30 is uh, natural. And then there's this uh, ev evolutionary hybrid, which is lunisolar. Mm -hmm. Here, the idea here is as follows. Uh, lo uh, lunar, year, uh, lunar month is easy to measure, but we need a year. So let's have a combine them, and uh, it will be both useful and easy to measure. And there's a uh, different classification, which is computational versus observational. So you can argue that only one of them is a, a true calendar. Computational is a calendar which is based on formulas. You can sit down and write the dates for the next tens of millions of years, backwards and forwards. This is what the Mayans, uh, the Maya civilization liked to do very much. But uh, it's 
it might not be very useful if your, your, if your mathematical models are imprecise. The observational calendars are a set of rules. So every month, go and look for the star. You see it, it's a new month or a new year. So that is something which works a lot better, but it's very hard to predict precisely. So uh, an example of such a calendar is uh, the modern Islamic one, which uh, goes like this. You have 12 lunar months a year. So the rule is that you see a new moon, that's uh, a new month starting. Uh, different states actually have different uh, interpretations of what does it mean to see a new moon. Sometimes you can look at the sky and convince yourself you see something. It's not you can be trusted or not trusted, it's up the, to the state or to the religious authorities. The site is <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, in particular, in various states, you can have different months at the same time. Another uh, effect is that, for instance, uh, if you are more to the west, then the moon is a bit older when it gets to your place, so there's more chance that you can see it. So western Islamic states, for example, ahead in calendar. Or the eastern uh, states, Another uh, funny drawback is that uh, once you are in advanced civilization and you want to sell calendars in the store, and you have this rule that somebody should see the moon to declare that the month started, well, it's very hard. It's not very hard to predict when the moon starts. It's a lot harder to predict when it will be visible. So we should take into account not only astronomy but also weather, also uh, refraction of the atmosphere, uh, many more factors. And uh, it's a mess, and you can't really trust those calendars. They're at most rule of thumb of what the dates are going to be. Uh, and uh, for the Islamic calendar, there is a counterpart which is actually computational, and this is what computers use when they want to converse one calendar to another. Uh, but this is uh, not recommended by the proper. Muhammad, you cannot really use it for religious purposes. Uh, there's the Roman uh, older calendar, which has 10 lunar months at the beginning. They were called Martis to December, with the obvious intermediate values. So this is strange, why right then? Well, nobody really knows, but either they were just not caring or not counting the two other months. They seem to be okay with it. Uh, but uh, the reason that Mars was uh, in the beginning is probably because uh, in the spring, when the birds are singing, and the flowers are blooming, uh, the Roman legions uh, are uh, marching to wage <laughs> war in their neighbors, and uh, so this is a good place to have a new year. And this is also when they elected the consuls, so the new consuls would uh, define and accept its strategy draft the troops and go ahead. But gradually, uh, the mass uh, became independent of the moon. This is something which happened in a lot of places. And uh, uh, extra months were uh, inserted to keep up with uh, the seasons, because seasons is important. You want the spring. Uh, and then in the year 153 BC, it is documented that the elections, the date of the elections was moved to January the 1st. It is, uh, so probably because the Roman Empire was expanding and you had further battlefields, you had to march further, so you needed more time to get there. Uh, and probably this is why also New Year was moved to January the 1st, but this is uh, not clear. How much time do I have? Six minutes. Okay. Uh, the ancient Egyptian calendar. Well, uh, let me just tell you that uh, they had two calendars of the two parts of Egypt. One was looking at Sirius, because they noted that Sirius rises over the horizon just when uh, the Nile Delta is flooding, and so that was a great point to mark the new year. The other place, they noted that the sun rises every time in the east in a bit different location with some period, and uh, they concluded that well, when it's in the most uh, southern part, then this 
that happens in the winter. That's when the sun is born. The god of sun is called Ra. So that's basically his birthday. It's important. You should celebrate it. And so they had the calendar um, around that. That's actually the only birthday that makes sense because it's the sun going around once a year. It's meaningful. Uh, and after unification, they got some uh, finding calendar, which was lunisolar for religious purpose, but most people don't really uh, care for the extra months which the priests inserted, so they just came up with the system of have 12 months, 30 days each, and since they knew that the year is 30, 365 days, there's five extra days, that left five unaccounted days, which were dedicated to festivals and heavy drinking. Um, and the uh, <laughs> same rationale, just January 1st and January 1st. Okay, and uh, so in the remaining time, let me tell you how you get more advanced. So, uh, if you want to be more precise, you want to construct some advanced calendar, you will probably have some irrational number and you will want to approximate it by irrational. For instance, have five leap years every nine uh, full periods. So uh, the way to do it is by continued fractions. You take your number, you write it like this, you cut it somewhere, and you get a sequence of rationals, and those are the best approximations in a strict mathematical sense, which I will not uh, dedicate time to right now. But uh, it's uh, algorithmic. And how does the Gregorian calendar work for this? So the official goal of uh, Paul Gregory, uh, Gregory probably, uh, was to uh, fix uh, the date of Easter. This is an important holiday. It must be as uh, the Nikea uh, co Convectum uh, decided, which is the first Sunday after the first full moon after uh, the vernal equinox. So you should be very sure when the vernal equinox is. Uh, Actually, Easter should be celebrated not on Passover. That's what they're really making true. <laughs> That's probably what I need. That's the, the real thing, there, which is why it's synchronized to the Hebrew calendar. They have their own one of calendars, as I understood, which is similar but not precisely uh, the same. Uh, so uh, the idea was uh, that you take, you, you want to work with cycles of 100 years because this is simple to remember. So you consider this difference, you approximate it by rationals, and you see that you have a nice small denominator of uh, 4. Of 4, here it is, no, here it is. And uh, what's 4 about? Uh, it's uh, 4 centuries. Every 4 centuries you should have 97 leap years that would improve your position. Uh, and this is how we actually work today. And you can also note that the next denominator is 5, which actually would improve the precision, uh, but we don't use it for some reason. But they're both limiting precision, in the sense that you accumulate the day every few thousands of years, you can't really do better. There is a calendar which I like very much, which is the Iranian calendar. Uh, it was proposed by uh, Mark Yam, who is a famous guy, wrote nice poems. And uh, the research was funded by uh, Sultan Jalal al-Din Alil Shah I. The research lasted five years. And what they came up with is that, well, you can approximate the precise ratio between uh, the lunar and the solar uh, uh, sorry, between uh, integral number of days and uh, the solar here by this number, which essentially means that you should have a period of 33 years, 8 out of 10 should be mm, leap years. And this is indeed how it works nowadays in Iran. You have 12 months, 6 31 days, 5 to 30 days, and the 12th month is the month is the leap month, and whenever the month is 
as this index in the cycle of 33, you can uh, you add one day to the last month, and this is a lot, a lot more precise than the Gregorian calendar. I have no idea why we are not using this instead. This is a great calendar. And uh, the final calendar, which uh, we uh, are using here in Israel, is based on the Metonic cycle. This is the observation that if you consider the ratio between the year and the month, then essentially there's a small denominator, denominator here, which jumps a lot the next ratio, which means that this is a great fraction. You can take a period of 19 years, have seven out of them leap years, and you will get a very great precision. And this is how uh, the Hebrew calendar is actually uh, designed. So there's a lot of minor rules to account for days. Initially, it began as a computational, as an observational calendar, but over the years it became computational. In fact, uh, by the end of the first millennium, the set of rules was described by none other than Algorithmi himself. So this is an algorithm in the strictest sense of the word uh, for computing uh, the calendar. And uh, well, uh, what's our conclusion from here? Uh, that actually nobody really needs a precise calendar, that's just for fun. Uh, it's not practical, unless you consider practical keeping track of holidays, giving a group of people national pride, etc. But all that things cost uh, a lot of uh, astronomers and scientists to perfect their techniques to the limits, and uh, this is great when religion actually helps science. So here you have Omar Khayyam and uh, Eudoxus, who is credited with the uh, 365 and a quarter number, and uh, that's it. Thank you.